imagination to come up with the story as to make the film. So when Afternoons heard a little while ago that Canberra filmmaker Richard Snatchell was working on, wait for it, The Blind Masseurs of Taipei, well, Richard's a pretty thoughtful filmmaker and there's a great deal more to this than a wild idea. It goes to all sorts of interesting notions about how cultures deal with disability and ability, how you make a film that explores someone else's world with real understanding. So I'm quite delighted that Richard's with me now live in the studio. Richard, hello. Hi, Genevieve. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you for being understanding about being bumped by Osama bin Laden. Uh, I think I have to completely understand that one. <laughs> Absolutely. Richard, this is part of the documentary maker's art, though, isn't it? Knowing when there's a real story to be told, that there's something you can explore. I, I guess it's a very personal thing as well, in a way. you sort of um, It's something that appeals to you in a way, as a, as a filmmaker and a, and, a, and a recorder of stories. And I guess I, I just, I don't think too much probably about whether, um, oh, will it have an audience? I just think, oh, that's really interesting. And it was my partner, Kelly, who is originally from Taiwan. And she said, oh, Dad, you know, gets massages from blind people. I said, what do you mean, a blind person? No, no, lots of different blind people. There are blind massage sort of salons around Taiwan, and around Taipei and Taiwan. So that's really interesting. That's not something that we have in Australia. And it, she mentioned that to me a couple of years ago, and about a year ago, we sort of, when we were in Taiwan visiting her family, we went to a few visit a few blind masseurs and and uh, see them in action and, and have massages. So I really want to do something, film something, and so um, this is just what we've been doing in the last month or so. Well, let's find out more about the blind masseurs of Taiwan. What's the history of this idea? Well. The, the history was that you know that that mention from Kelly and then and then talking to blind masseurs when we're in Taiwan and and that it's a very historic profession, um, and it is in other Asian countries as well, Japan and China and and some Southeast Asian countries as well. And so it's really interesting the idea of that being a profession uh, and in Taiwan it's, it's it's protected by law. Mm, well, that's what I'm interested in. So yeah. this is something with a long history that's also protected by law has been protected by law in Taiwan. That's right. That's mm. right. But it's going. The law is going to change at the end of this year to allow sighted people to practice massage. There are already sighted people practicing massage unofficially. Um, they're just they're not allowed to use the word amor, which is the Mandarin word for massage, in their their, their, you know, their shop front or their, their business name. They can't use armor, so they call themselves things like day spas, and that's how they get around it. But generally speaking, it's a, it's a reserved profession for blind people. And how, how did that happen? Why was the masseur's profession reserved for the blind? I think because um, it, 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 because many, many years ago, it becoming a, I can't tell you exactly how many years ago, but I think you're talking probably maybe 100, 200 years ago, it, it, it became a... Uh, uh, it came in from perhaps Japan, or there's a bit of argument as to where it came from, Japan or China, um, that it became a, a sort of a, 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 profession, a profession for blind people. Obviously, blind people have restrictions in what they can do as a vocation. And, um, and because blind people, you know, you generally have very highly developed other senses, of course, their sense of touch is very, very highly developed. And um, so it became a, a sort of a... a, a, a standard profession and then the law in Taiwan um, went further to, to protect it and uh, now they're opening it up. Um, How do you learn to be a masseur when you're blind? Well you basically you, you are supported by organisations like the, the Taiwan Foundation for the Blind who, who assisted us with the filming and found our key subject um, a chap called Wang Uju and he's actually a trainer himself so he trains and his, his wife is also blind and she's a masseur and um, and uh, Master Wang, he, he actually is one of the trainers of new blind masseurs. So you have a blind, experienced blind masseur tra uh, training other blind masseurs. Guiding your hands? Yes, yeah, exactly. Very, obviously very hands-on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Genevieve, to be very, very corny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, absolutely. Which hey, is, which Genevieve, is... while, while we're talking, mm. I actually, I wanted to, are, you, are you a bit parched? Because I wanted to bring you some Taiwanese... High country oolong tea. Oh, Richard! Oolong chai. How extraordinary! Yeah. What have you got here for me? It's, Show me. It's beautiful high country. So we're going to have a lovely Taiwanese experience. I actually I love oolong tea. Do it's, you do? Do it's you? Beautiful. Okay. I do. I this do. Is, Kelly's father got this. This is really this really is nice. This is very stuff. special, Richard. So we're discussing a, a beautiful cultural practice, and Richard, you're just handing me across a lovely little pottery bowl and a flask. So as we're thinking about deep cultural practices in somewhere far, far away, I'm sipping oolong tea. Uh, I've even, I've even actually also brought for you a... <laughs> it's a Taiwanese experience. A Taiwanese rice, a sweet sort of rice biscuit. Oh, 
Oh, and, um, this, is, this is fantastic. I have brought one as well for Joe, so I don't <laughs> want to... <laughs> okay. We'll, um, we'll crack, we'll crack this open while we're considering... Hmm, well, it's afternoon tea. This is a classic thing in Taipei. I mean, I go to Kelly's father's shop. He's mm. a tailor in Taipei. And on any afternoon after lunch, they will sit and they will drink this beautiful oolong tea. And, and, mm. and uh, it, it's really good for you, re reinvigorating. And it smells a little bit like jasmine. I hope it's not too strong. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. That's good. It's you, delicious. You never boil it, you know, 80 to 90 degrees. It's real... superb, Richard. Yeah. This is... Do you like it? It's, really, it's really great. It's <laughs> experience, this, actually. <laughs> I'm not thinking about this idea of the masseurs seeing the world and our bodies with their fingers. Yeah. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. When Master One was giving me a massage, within about 10 seconds, he just ran his hand over my back and, and pointed out all these... And went, oh, you've got problems there, you've got problems there. And I'm like, yes, yes, how do you know? And even touched the back of my calf and went, oh, you've got a fairly weak stomach. I'm like, how do you get... So there's the principles of Chinese medicine in there. Okay. Um, but absolutely spot on. Very, very... It's, it's, there's something almost mysterious about it. Now tell me about this change to the law that they're facing. Well, they've decided, um, the Taiwanese government have decided that the profession should be open to all. And they... That really upset the blind massage fraternity at first when they, they announced it about I think two to three years ago and um, and there were street protests there were two major street protests from um, blind people and other people with disabilities saying oh this is going to you know restrict opportunities for, for, for people with disabilities but the government actually has been working really hard for a couple of years to put programs in place to keep the profession very much alive for blind people and to really encourage um, young people with blindness or some level of visual impairment that that it is you know there there is still a great career there and um, the other thing is that blind massage um, salons in the past have often been a bit dark and dingy because often the masseurs haven't really cared about the environment that they've been creating um, and so there's a real move that the government is making along with organizations like the Taiwan Foundation for the Blind for for them to really improve their decor and and, and make the um, massage salons appealing to young people and that sort of thing. So, yeah. Camberville maker Richard Stashel says we here in the studio. We're di drinking oolong tea and eating Taiwanese snacks. Actually, top up. Yeah, Richard's just uh, topping me up with the oolong tea, which is absolutely beautiful. Richard's in the throes of making a documentary about the blind massage of Taiwan. It's a deeply traditional profession, but also one that's under considerable challenge. But but Richard, I'm interested in how you approach this story as a filmmaker. I mean, you're a great big lumbering white man, and I. I yeah, actually, literally, Richard, you Spot must be on. six foot three, six foot four? Six foot five. Six actually. foot five. <laughs> how, how do you go making your way into something very intimate and special in this world? Well, I'm not a Mandarin speaker, and nor, do I, nor do I speak Taiwanese, which is the second language of Taiwan. Um, so Kelly, who speaks Mandarin, of Thank course. Thank for Kelly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, she actually conducted the interview. <laughs> Genevieve, you're spilling your, your Taiwan rice biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Kelly, Kelly conducted the interviews in Mandarin, but really, I, I guess it's about connecting with people. And I, and I thought the idea of making some sort of um, film project with um, a, with blind a blind person and blind people was going to be, you know, a really interesting experience, and it was extremely interesting. But it really is about connecting with people and encouraging them to open up. And, and Kelly's a bit like me; she's a bit of a sort of a have a chat sort of person. She gets on with chatty, people. Richard. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get the two of us together and away we go. Look, we've got a caller on the line. You're okay if we go to a caller? Sure, yeah. Eleanor's with me. Eleanor, hello. Hello. I'm absolutely delighted to hear your program. Um, I'm a facilitator uh, for Patria King at the Quest for Life Foundation. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I also uh, am the national director of uh, the Oncology Massage Program. Uh, which is um, unique to Australia, and uh, we have a blind massage therapist, um, a, a lass from Armadale, who worked on the programs at Quest for about nine years, and uh, she's just absolutely brilliant. Oh, that's great. That's 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 great. And are you aware that it's a... Sorry, it's too No, go ahead, Richard. You keep interviewing, Richard. You go ahead. <laughs> Jump in, Richard. Wrong side of the fence, aren't no, I? Yeah. Go ahead. I, I just wanted to ask, if, if, um, ask Eleanor if... if, if that masseur is, is in any way sort of encouraging other blind people to go to, to, to get into massage? Well, uh, we are encouraging um, people, especially um, any massage therapist, to learn the skills of oncology massage, which, is, which are quite unique. 
um, but you, it's really difficult to find people that are confident enough to do this work if they're not cited because of the prejudices we have around massage for people with major illnesses. And you know, the best thing about Deb Warren was that she worked with people with really complex health issues and apart from brief interviews <laughs> before the session uh, intake, she managed their um, health issues extremely well through the tips of a finger. So wow. it was, she's incredible. And well, really lovely to hear from you about this. Thank you so much for your call. Okay, thanks for having me. Okay, bye bye. Bye. Richard. I hope she becomes a trainer well, for other blind people. That would be, wouldn't that be fabulous? Yeah. Well, it's just such an interesting idea when you sort of toy with it, don't you? Because in Western culture, we're often so awkward about the idea of taking our clothes off to be massaged. You know, it's something that really can freak us out a little bit if we're not used to it. Yeah, so actually one girl who did some street interviews in Taiwan and one girl we were chatting to, she said she likes going to blind masseurs for that reason she feels more comfortable exactly. than with sighted masseurs. Sighted mm. male masseurs, yeah. Richard, which, which moments touched you particularly in this story? I, I guess seeing um, Master Wang um, and his wife, um, Cho Min, at, at their home in Taipei. I was just interested, you know, Taipei, seven million people in the second most densely populated country in the world, how they get on, and just seeing them with their two little children, um, changing nappies with their, their new baby, and, yeah. and their daughter, who's a little bit older, helping them, because she can see. And, um, yeah, I guess, I guess seeing that sort of personal side, and, and plus seeing him going to work, and then his professionalism at work, going in in the morning, getting his computer, checking his appointments, using audio on his computer, and um, just and just going, wow, this is amazing. Because I, I was thinking, how would you survive in a city like this being a blind person? Do, do people, you know, people well, it, it rushing around... It becomes so expectations, doesn't it? Because yeah. the, here, here are people who have made a wonderfully rich life life for themselves in, in a way that, that really we're not expecting to find at all. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Richard, at what stage of production are you up to? Well, I just finished filming, so I just came back from Taiwan a couple of weeks ago. I'm just about to get into the sort of logging process and going through the footage and picking out the um, bits that, that look good. And, of course, talking to prospective um, um, you know, broadcasters, are, 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 all the things I've done before. No, I shouldn't say all, because I have done some work for the ABC, but all the things I've done overseas before have been shown on SBS. So um, SBS or the ABC, if, if, if interested, of course. Oh, that <laughs> sounds like a natural fish. Anyway, it probably <laughs> may end up just as a DVD, even if it's just a tool to help encourage um, blind massage in Australia, I, I'd be happy with that. Well, and, and lovely too, Richard, with that, that personal focus. Your partner from Taiwan, you've got a child together, so this is part of his heritage too, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Richard, just lovely to have you in here. Thanks for the, the oolong tea and the rice snack. That was a pleasure, Jeremy. Fantastic. I wanted to give you a sensory experience. You, you have, and the listeners as well as I crunch my way through that. <laughs> lovely to see you here. We'll really look forward to seeing it when it's made. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, Richard. Bye-bye. And that's Richard Snash, or television documentary maker, and his film on the blind masses of Taiwan. And some Facebook comments already on the audio of President Obama's speech on...